All right, testing and such. Um, yeah, so I just made this video and there's no sound, which is <laughs> really a bummer. So I really don't want to make it twice, but anyway. Um, so first off, zombie picture show conversation, whatever. So I'll link to his video, which is you know kind of not a great recording. Um, I had trouble because my speakers don't work left right and it's left right speakers kind of stereo thing. But anyway, it's, it's a small issue. Um, so I have an MP3 of like 40 minutes of it that's from my end, so my end is better quality sound. So I'll post a link to that too. Um, 40 minutes is pretty much what the whole thing. I mean, we did keep saying the same stuff. Not well, we said it differently, but I mean, yeah, it was pretty much the same argument over and over and over again. He says there's hope. I say yeah, you got you got no chance. Anyway, um, just <laughs> just admit it. It's game over. It's just time to admit it. Um, as Jefferson would say, you have the, a wolf by the ears, and um, you you can't hold him, and you can't let go of him. Um, but anyway, so the, yes, Jefferson's going to come up here. Um, so Piero has made. I guess he's going to read the rest of this excerpt from a, a, an absolute crap piece of shit book. It's basically a Red Riding story called a historical reference of some kind. It's a fucking novel. It's a it's a it's a, it's a story, a narrative of Thomas Jefferson's life in slavery. And it's just, you know, like I said, if this is what people are going to call history, doing history, where you just make up a whole bunch of shit, um, then whatever. Who cares? I mean, it's just so bad. So anyway, there's, you know, Piro's reading this, and then he makes some point. Defunk this! Like, I'm supposed to debunk Thomas Jefferson's on the subject of slavery now. Like, somehow I've made some comment about how Thomas Jefferson was the greatest slave owner in the history of slave owners. Like, that's the statement I've made. All I've s is suggested is that slavery in the North was a lot different than slavery in the South, and particularly in Jefferson's family case, um, the slaves were already even turning white. So, yeah, it was very different. Um, and um, so let's not pretend. I mean, his, you know, his, his relatives are half sisters to people who are slaves. I mean, it's just insanely different. Um, but anyway, you know, who cares? I'm not going to go through all that crap. Um, but anyway, it's just this whole straw man bullshit that he makes this a a outrageous accusation that you're a rape apologist if you won't call Thomas Jefferson. It's okay to call somebody a rape apologist because that's the video he commented on, affirmatively, um, if they don't call Thomas Jefferson a rapist, right? And now if you don't call Thomas Jefferson a rapist, you're also denying slavery, and that Thomas Jefferson was somehow a slave owner, and that was bad. Okay? And um, so now he's trying to prove that Thomas Jefferson was some sort of horrible slave owner, which I don't think you can possibly do. But anyway, this guy made an effort in his book to make Thomas Jefferson out to look bad. And he did it through typical propagandist means, right? Selectively quote mining. So I'll just read an excerpt from one of the quotes that was mined. Um, and, um, you know, you can make your own determinations about the integrity of this guy that Puro thinks got the truth. The guy he thinks is the truth teller. So this is what the truth teller did. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there was this letter, uh, you know, concerning this whole what was called the the Missouri crisis. And so Thomas Jefferson had had definitely he, he was arguing with a lot of abolitionists about doing it the wrong way. And so in even other correspondence I read, he's he just kind of points out that you're just going to create a civil war if you do this, okay? If you don't do this the right way, there's a right way and a wrong way, and you do this the wrong way, you're going to destroy the American nation. So he saw the civil war, you know, 70 years later, he saw it, okay, as a possibility if this isn't done right. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so, um, so, so this guy is trying to say that Jefferson was for slavery, and so he uses an, a, a quote from a letter Jefferson wrote. And so that this is what Jefferson said, you know, wasting Jeremades on the miseries of slavery. So implying that, you know, Jefferson was deriding people for caring about 
slavery and um, trying to fix it. So it's almost like my band-aid versus cure argument that somehow if I if I complain that people are wasting money on band-aids that means I don't care about the problem even though yeah I'm aggressively arguing for a cure <laughs> yeah so anyway so except alright so he, he was talking to the Federalist so the next sentence um, which this guy that Puro thinks is telling the truth says as if we were advocates for it um, <coughs> sincerely in their uh, delimitations should direct their efforts to the true point of difficulty and unite their counsel with ours in, di in devising some reasonable and practical plan of getting rid of it. So clearly in the next sentence Jefferson's pointing out that you know I'm not an advocate for slavery I'm just saying do it right get rid of, we gotta get rid of it better than this. Um, all right, and so then Jefferson makes a point about American slaves are better fed and clothed than England's workers and laborless. So this is another quote where the guy's saying, see, Jefferson's an asshole. He's sitting there trying to say slavery's okay because Br Britain treats its people like shit. And then, but he leaves out, okay, the next line is, but do not mistake me, okay? This, you could just live on some of, you know, Jefferson was really quite eloquent, but I mean, come on, you could just live on this statement alone. But do not mistake me. I am not advocating slavery. I am not justifying the wrongs we have committed on a foreign people by the example of another nation committing equal wrongs on their own subjects. On the contrary, there is nothing I would not sacrifice to a practical plan of abolishing every vestige of this moral and political depravity. I mean, come on. So, so you're telling me a historian, a historian, who leaves that out is somehow not a propagandist. Doesn't have an agenda. He's going to quote mine a letter that has that statement in it and not provide that statement. On the contrary, there is nothing I would not sacrifice to a practical plan of abolishing every vestige of this moral and political depravity. He leaves that out. And you're telling me you're fair cop. You're telling me he's fair cop. You're telling me that's the way it should be done. You guys are the honorable people just trying to do the fair right thing. You know, I don't think you're fair. I don't think straw manning me <coughs> with having to defend Jefferson's lifestyle or, you know, what color silk panties he was wearing or any other kind of this bullshit has anything to do with the subject of whether you have a right to tell me that somebody's a rapist and you don't have any evidence okay so your liberal right your progressive right to sit there and accuse somebody of rape and just say he's a fucking rapist because I say so because I don't like him politically I don't like him for some reason I think it's just such goddamn bullshit. You want to play this straw man game and tell me you're an honorable, decent, progressive thinking, fair-minded person? Well, no fucking way. You can't survive scrutiny. If we take your own actions now in this in this debate, if if somebody 20 years later or 50 or 100 years later was to dissect this very debate, do you think you're going to come off as some kind of honorable, decent guy who is just looking for the truth? Are you going to come out with some guy who looks like he has a fucking goddamn slander his character agenda? Yeah, well, I think I could make a pretty damn good case that all you are is a slandering, petty motherfucking weasel who thinks so I can score a few points in this stupid, idiotic YouTube game I'm playing by fucking lying. So bravo and straw manning. So I don't think you could, your lifestyle, I don't think your life on, on YouTube, I don't think your life in your real world could survive any scrutiny whatsoever. I think I could hatchet job you into a little tiny piece of goddamn maggot. That's what I think I could be done damn easy. And the fact that somebody like Thomas Jefferson can survive, okay, uh, these deliberate efforts, and I think he survives them pretty well, um is probably to his credit at least a minor to his credit um just the like like, like the fact that the Kennedys consistently voted for a 70 percent tax bracket was to their credit 
um, maybe the rest, the, maybe 70 or 80 or 90 percent of the rest of their life was fucking crap, but at least they did that right. And the fact is, is that Thomas Jefferson, as President of the United States, abolished the slave trade internationally, um, you know, at least from America's point of view, the first nation to do so, and he accomplished the uh, Louisiana Purchase. And he did that because he didn't do the wrong thing in this Missouri crisis. And he didn't do the wrong thing with Haiti. Um, and so you want to you pretend he wasn't smart and clever and all this other kind of crap. And he didn't have to be pragmatic. And to quote Jefferson, he didn't, know, he didn't understand when he had a wolf by the ears. All right. And he had to figure out a solution. All right. And the solution wasn't just let go. Yeah. Fuck you. You're an idiot. I mean, you really, you're an idiot and a, 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 a cheap, slandering fuck. There. I mean, and, and it's quite obvious. Like I said, this guy is no, his, any historian who would leave that sentence, those sentences out, okay, is not a historian. He's a propagandist. Uh, proven. No, no, there's no way to get around that. I mean, there's just no way you leave that sentence out. <laughs> I mean, shit. Fuck you, and such, and so forth and whatnot. Yep.